Senator Warden. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ranking Member. It's good to be here. Uh, and thank you all for appearing. I sat where you sat. It's harder than it looks, so uh, I appreciate your being here. I want to ask a question about supervising big banks when they break the law, uh, including the mortgage foreclosures, but others as well. You know, we all understand why settlements are important, that trials are expensive and we can't dedicate huge resources to them. But we also understand that if a party is unwilling to go to trial, either because they're too timid or because they lack resources, that the consequence is they have a lot less leverage in all the settlements that occur. Now, I know there have been some landmark settlements, but we face some very special issues with big financial institutions. If they can break the law and drag in billions in profits and then turn around and settle, paying out of those profits, they don't have much incentive to follow the law. It's also the case that every time there's a settlement and not a trial, it means that we didn't have those days and days and days of testimony about what those financial institutions had been up to. So the question I really want to ask is about how tough you are, about how much leverage you really have in these settlements. And what I'd like to know is tell me a little bit about the last few times you've taken the biggest financial institutions on Wall Street all the way to a trial. Anybody? Um, Chairman Curry? To, uh, offer my, my perspective. Sure. A, a bank supervisor. Um, uh, we primarily view the, uh, the tools that we have as uh, mechanisms for uh, it correcting deficiencies. Uh, so in, uh, the primary motive for our enforcement actions is really to identify the problem and then demand uh, uh, a, a solution to it on an ongoing basis. That's right. And then you set a price for that. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt, but I just want to move this along. It's effectively a settlement. And what I'm asking is, when did you last take, and I know you haven't been there forever, so I'm really asking about the OCC, a large financial institution, we, a Wall Street bank, well, to trial. Uh, the institutions I supervise, national banks and federal thrifts, we've actually had a, a fairly a fair number of uh, consent orders. Uh, we do not no. have to bring uh, people to uh, in a, a, a trial or an Well, I appreciate that you say you don't have to bring them to trial. My question is, when did you bring them to trial? Uh, we have not had to do it as a practical matter to achieve our supervisory goals. Ms. Walter? And thank you, Senator. Um, um, as you know, among our remedies are penalties, but the penalties we can get are limited, and we actually have asked for additional authority, my predecessor did, uh, to raise penalties. What we, when we look at these issues, and uh, we truly believe that we have a very vigorous enforcement program, um, we look at the distinction between what we could get if we go to trial and what we could get if we don't. I appreciate that. That's, that's what everybody does. And so the question I'm really asking is, can you identify when you last took the Wall Street banks to trial? Um, I will have to get back to you with the specific information, but we do litigate um, and we do have settlements that are that are either rejected by the commission or not put forward for Okay, approval. we've got multiple people here. Anyone else want to tell me about the last time you took a Wall Street bank to trial? You know, I, I just want to note on this. There are district attorneys and U.S. attorneys who are out there every day squeezing ordinary citizens on sometimes very thin grounds and taking them to trial in order to make an example, as they put it. I'm really concerned that too big to fail has become too big for trial. That just seems wrong to me. If, if I can, I'll go quickly, Mr. Uh, Chairman Johnson. I have one more question I'd like to ask, and that's a question about why the large banks are trading at below book value. We all understand that book value, you know, it's just what the assets are listed for, what the liabilities are, and that most big uh, corporations trade well above book value. But many of the Wall Street banks right now are trading below book value, and I can only think of two reasons why that would be so. One would be because nobody believes that the bank's books 
are honest, or the second would be that nobody believes that the banks are really manageable. That is, that they are too complex either for the own, their own institutions to manage them or for the regulators to manage them. And so the question I have is what reassurance can you give that these large Wall Street banks that are trading for below book value, in fact, are adequately transparent and adequately managed? Um, Governor Torullo or Ms. Miller? So, there, so there's there's certainly another reason we might add to your list, Senator Warren, which is um, investors' skepticism as to whether a firm is going to make a return on equity that is in excess of what the investor regards as the the value of the individual parts. Uh, and so, I think what what you would hear analysts say is that in the wake of the crisis, there have been uh, issues on just that point. Um, surrounding first uh, what the regulatory environment is going to be, uh, how much capital is going to be required, what activities are going to be restricted, what aren't going to be restricted. Two, for some time there have been questions about uh, the the um, franchise value of some of these institutions. You know, the, the, the difference actually is the economy has been improving, and some of the some of the um, uh, firms have. Good. Well, I, I appreciate it, and I yeah. apologize for going over, Mr. Senator Hagan. Thank you. 